Hey guys, today we're going to do a quick how-to on how to install your pivot bearings in your swing arm. Uh, the first thing you usually do is get your vise set up. Real simple, put a rag in there, it helps protect everything. I've already got one side installed, but lay out all your bearings um, so you go wherever you got everything. Keep your grease with you. So the first thing you want to do is grease the inside of these, put some grease in there, helps the bearing press in. Um, so we'll get started. You also want to always use, make sure when you press your bearings in, your bearings are going to be labeled on one side with some writing. You also notice this race right here is thicker than this side. The thicker side is the side you're going to want to press against whenever you're pressing one in, whether at whatever side it's on. Make sure you're pressing against the writing and the thicker side of the bearing. I usually just put the bearing on my hand. Kind of set it in there. Take your time once you get it in. One side there. Usually try to find a socket. Works best. Find one that will slide into the race nice and about as tight as you can get it, so it doesn't bind up, but it'll press all the way tight against the bearing. Um, that way, if you need to put an extension on it, whether it's in this way and this way, you got plenty of leverage to uh, use your socket in the vise. Next one in. Back here. Place that a little bit, big enough to get your socket in there. If you got an extra set of hands, it always helps, but if you just hold that like this, take your time. You usually can just do it on your own. You don't want to go too far in with this one. Usually go in flush to the collar because you're going to have your other bearings that are going to sit in there against that. So you're going to want to just press your inside bearings in just enough to give you enough room for your seal to slide in there and have enough room to fit. You can put it in a little farther, you can leave it a little bit closer, but as long as you can get your seal in there, that's all that really matters. Um, and the next step is going to be to uh, put some grease in there. I always recommend using a good waterproof grease. Really get it in there nice and coated and deep. So next we're going to install our seals and thrust, thrust, thrust washers. Properly say that. So depending on the kit you have, um, the OEMs usually have a roller bearing type thrust washer that sits in the middle of these two washers. So you want to go ahead and put a light coat of grease on that. You're going to want to stack them like so. Washer, thrust washer, another washer. That's going to slide right in there against that. Next step is going to be your outer seal. Those usually just push in by hand. If they don't, you can always just give them a light tap with a hammer. I've already installed the inside ones. So if it is going to give you a little bit of trouble, just kind of get it barely started. Use a rubber mallet. Just tap her in with your hammer until she's seated. I always use either a dead blow or rubber mallet. I wouldn't recommend using a metal hammer. Just take your time, you know, don't just beat on it to get it in there. If it's not gonna go and it's giving you trouble, you know, take it off and maybe deburr it, open it up a little bit if you have to. Some seals are different, some fit different, none of them always fit the same, but most of the time you can just push them in with your hands. 
All right, so the last step after you get your seals in there, everything's greased. I got one side done. Um, so you got your bearings in, greased, your thrust washer, all your seals. Go back, put some more grease in there. Grease up your pivot tube. That'll slide right down in to the other side. You got your last spacer that's gonna be on the outside. That'll press in. Give that a little, set that in and that's pretty much it. You're ready to uh, install it on your machine. So the next step, we include this in our kit. Uh, nice TM Designs chain slider block. That's gonna slide right on here as so. And you're gonna go ahead and tighten this up here and it clamps on. Once that slides in, it's kind of locked in there. It's solid, can't go anywhere and they work awesome. They will last probably the lifetime you'll ever use it. Um, and they're also replaceable, so that makes it nice. can do this too. We're a little spoiled. We have nice snap-on tools. Uh, doesn't matter what you have for tools, as long as they do the job and you take your time, you'll be good. But if you want the best, you gotta buy the best. I expect some money from snap-on for promoting that. Spent a lot of money with these guys. So now that the stuff gone there, ready to uh, pick it up and Next step, we'll uh, show you how to install your linkage, which you took it apart, so you should be able to get it back together. Also, it's another good time. A lot of you guys are probably doing this on used bikes, older bikes. Nobody likes rebuilding these, but you already have it off. It's in your hands. For the price of a bearing kit to rebuild your pivot bearings, both here and here, I mean, it's a no-brainer. We also sell those. You could add it in. Um, you know, when you order your swing arm, whatever, you can say, hey, you know, I'd like a full bearing kit to do this, and you can put everything fresh. Um, if not, this machine is a brand new machine that we're doing, so everything's brand new, there's no need to. Grab a little grease here. Put your linkage back in. The way it came out, all bikes are different, but for the most part, you got your wishbone here, your pivot area. You're gonna want your clevis where the shock's gonna mount in the front. This mounts to your swing arm. So we'll just get that started, set that there for now. Next, we're gonna install the swing arm. Grease up your pivot pole. Have that handy and ready on the side it's going to be sliding through. Grab your swing arm. We spend a lot of time and pride in how these fit. And if you watch how easy this goes in there and fits, it fits in there like a glove. You can do this one, one person, your bolt, slide it in, get it started. There you go, swing arm's in. Set that down for now. Now since you're changing up your swing arm, the bolts and everything varies, we also include, which is a grade eight hardened bolt that is machine fit, made for our setup, that we include with the kit. And go ahead. that one in. I always keep a little hammer on this case, gotta give it a little tap, get that set through. Swing arms on, your linkage is in, all your bearings are done. Pretty simple. Uh, the next step would be to install your shock. Okay, so we're gonna show you how to install the bearing carrier into your swing arm. 
Okay, and the axle. I already installed the shock. That's pretty easy. Um, in the previous video, we saw the linkage set up. Put the bottom of the shock in first. Put your bolt through it. Line up your top shock. Same thing. Not hard. Pretty simple. Um, so, you want to put a nice film of grease inside the carrier. <laughs> Hold on. So you're going to want to put a nice film of grease on the carrier. Go in from the left. Um, it's a little bit easier to grab a pry bar and just take your time and work that in. Grab a rubber mallet. Once that's set, you're going to want to put a little grease inside your bearings on the seals before you slide your axle in. So next we're going to install the axle. We've already got everything greased and ready. Slide that through. Take your rubber mallet. And then once it's locked in, it should be good to go. Next step, installing your rotor on your brake disc hub. We always use OEM grade. Honda brake disc bolts. They're pre loctited new, fresh. They're pretty cheap, no reason not to. Snug them up by hand first with that. I'm going to go through and grab the torque wrench after and torque them to spec, whatever the manufacturer recommends. So next, install the rear brake adapter. Line that up. Next is your brake disc, anti-fade nut. Set this in to give you room for your snap ring. Should be able to just push that right on, work it around with your hand. And just set that like that for now and you can tighten that up when you're done. Everything in the rear end, your back brakes are hooked up and everything from here. Next, we're going to install the rear caliper. Um, we use a brand new OEM Honda TRX 450R caliper with brand new pads all assembled. Get on there, go ahead and tighten them up. Next, we'll install the rear sprocket. Slide this on. Obviously, make sure your tapered side for the bolts are facing the inside. Go ahead and get these started. Go 
once you get them all in, you go ahead and tighten them all up. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the hubs. Um, we run the adjustable axles on these, so you can actually run it. We set them at the widest width, just for handling the rod wise. If you want to, you can run it narrower. The spacers on the inside, obviously it widens it. You take these out, slide your hub on, put that back on. It's back there. We always run it on the widest setting, like I said, so throw a little grease on there. Slide your hub on whatever way you want to run it. Wider, narrower, there's a couple different options. Snakes and fireflies. So next, you want to go ahead and run your chain through. You're going to want to set your carrier at the farthest point to the machine before you cut your chain. I've already set it there, but it comes with a pin. You lock the pin in. You push this down, back or up. That'll alter that for your chain adjustment. You always want to set it towards the front when you just cut your chain. So we'll show you in a minute, because if not, then you're going to cut your chain and it's not going to fit. And you're going to be upset. <laughs> Alright, so after you mark it all the way up, you want to run your chain up to where it's going to fit. Not be super loose, but not too tight. And you're going to mark the master link that we're going to cut off. As you can see, the outer plate when it's off, this end is going to match the same side on the other side to slide your master link in. You don't want to cut it here, because if you end up cutting it the wrong link, then you're going to end up with an open end and a closed end. You're not going to get your link on. So go ahead and mark it with a pen, a marker, paint, anything. Which one needs to be cut, and we'll show you how to cut that. So next, we're going to show you how to cut your chain. There's a lot of ways to cut your chain. You can use a chain cutting tool. You can use a press tool. We're going to show you the way that probably a lot of you guys will have to do it, because everyone's got a vise and a grinder or a drummel or whatever. Everyone's scared to cut their chain. I don't know why. You don't believe any people come in and say, can you cut my chain? And they're just scared to cut it. It's not that hard. So, put in the vise, tighten it down, leave the top of your chain links facing up. All I've got is just a Milwaukee grinder. This is a flap wheel, but if you've got a grinder wheel, that's fine. What you want to do is just grind this down, and I'll show you and take those beans off. got the peens off you can almost you can see your, the marks where it's been peened over you're gonna take a flat-headed punch and a hammer just get ready to clean them each side tap it like just like that you cut your chain in less than a minute chain installed. I've already run it up and through. Run it up on the top, run it through your chain slider. Go ahead and line it up. Grab your master link. I'm going to 
couple different ways to put these on, but I always use a good pair of flat nose pliers. Go ahead and start it. You want to make sure you put the rounded end towards the front. Go ahead and grab the outside, clip it on. There you go. Go ahead and just snug up the chain adjustment. Go ahead and roll it down. By rolling this down, it'll roll that actually back and up, so you'll gain a little more ground clearance if you play. We always roll them back to gain a little more. Just go ahead and turn it back, roughly to about there. You'll want to recheck it when it's together and somebody's sitting on it. So next, cleaning your brakes. Might not, everyone might not have one of these. If you do, makes it a little easier, a little faster. If not, you can do it the old fashioned way I can show you. Um, go ahead and fill your reservoir up. You can run a line, unless you want to let it puke out, which I don't recommend. Always make sure you're topped off. You can use this to pump it up. Do that about 15 or 20 times. Hold the pedal down. So to do it the old way, pump your brake pedal up, make sure this is tight, closed. Always keep an eye on your fluid. Say pump it about 15 to 20 times, hold it down. While holding the pedal down, break this loose, tighten it back up. When it's tight, let the pedal back up. If you let the pedal up before, you're going to suck a bunch of air. The air is what you're trying to get out of the brake, not put in. And just continue that process. And you can see when you break it open, the fluid gets pushed out, pulls it off, let the pedal up, and it'll suck down the fluid even more. It may take a little time to do it this way, but if you do it the way I'm showing you, you should get brakes pretty quickly. Right there, I'm already, I'm already getting pressure on my pedal, so the brakes are pumping and building. So, Dusty at BBC Trikes. Um, if you guys enjoyed what you saw, um, it was beneficial, helped you at all. That's what we're here for. Um, like I said, comment, like, subscribe down below. Anything you uh, want to see or videos you want to see or questions you have or any other how-tos you'd like to have us do or see or talk about a little more in depth to help you out with anything you're building or doing. Um, just like, subscribe, and comment down below and tell us what you want to see and we can go from there. I mean, as you can see, got a lot of cool projects going on. Just finished this guy up. Um, got the big wheel in the background, another trike. That's actually one of the other guy, Eric's, that works here. Um, like I said, like, subscribe, comment below, and uh, tell us what you want to see. We're here to help you out. Peace.